In this demo, we are going to be talking about how we can use VMware Security's IDPS tools to help secure your environment from real-world threats. We will show you a real system with vulnerabilities and how we configured policy to detect and prevent the workload from being exploited. Finally, we will prove the system has been protected using monitoring, vulnerability scanning, and syslog. Let's dive in! A vulnerability scan has been run and we have identified a server in our environment that is susceptible to the Apache Log4j and Log4 shell attack. It may be an older vulnerability, but still very devastating because of the ease of exploitation. Since the scanner was able to reach it, we need to understand what the potential impact is and mitigation steps we can take. The workload in question is Linux 01 and it has an IP address of 10.198.217. .166. This is an object in the vCenter and we'll show how this relates into the NSX manager shortly. What we do know is we have to do something here very quickly. Now currently our security posture is fairly permissive. Right now we have a firewall rule that we're testing that says anybody can talk to Linux 01 and Linux 02 on any port and protocol. We have a very subtle IDS policy observing traffic going to and from these workloads that is set to detect an attack. We're not going to do any mitigation or prevention in this case, and we can prove this by doing a quick test on the workload. This is a litmus test for IDS events, a benign way to test vulnerabilities without actually harming the workload. If this were real, the vulnerability would successfully exploit the workload. So what do we do? Our IDS is written using the same constructs as the firewall. We have the ability to select different workloads and policies and apply profiles to them. Profiles are collections of IDPS signatures. Right now, I have everything set up in the environment to automatically download new signatures. New signatures are added to the profile that is configured in the rule set from earlier. This profile checks for a wide variety of signatures and is not in any way targeted to specific vulnerabilities. We can see all 11,863 signatures and the system will perform a packet capture if we hit a signature. We want to create a more focused set of signature checks which can be applied to this particular set of workloads that will do prevention or exploit mitigation. Here I've written a second profile called Log4j. We set the product type to Apache Log4j which will in turn select the set of signatures that is relevant to Log4j. Now we only have 48 signatures this profile will check. We apply this profile to the Linux workload so that the system can mitigate against this particular attack. We go back to the distributed rules and insert a new rule above that's targeted toward the vulnerable Linux 01 workload. Once we add and apply this rule, the policy should stop Log4j from exploiting the Linux 01 workload. The source is set to any while the destination is set to the Linux 01 workload. We have a pre-existing group with membership criteria matching the Linux 01 workload. Here we are showing the dynamically matched workload and the resolved IP address of Linux 01. We select the group, leave the allowed services to any, and select the newly created Log4j profile. We still have the previous rules checking and detecting on all signatures. The newer, more specific rule will now go from detect only to detect and prevent. Logs are essential in proving the new policy has blocked the attack, so we will enable logging. Now, we publish that rule so it goes into effect. Once that's taken place, we will now signal back to our security operations team that we put in a compensating control. We need them to rerun their vulnerability scan to see if the policy is working as expected. When we have the new scan results, we will look in the system to confirm our policy is protecting the Linux 01 workload. Our scanning team has come back and performed the test against this server. You can see the server is up and running and we've not had any ill effect on the server's normal functionality. We can log in, get to the internet and perform other actions. We haven't experienced any issues or caused any service outages with our new policy. When we look at the IDS reporting overview, you can see there's quite a bit of activity here. A scan like Nessus or any other vulnerability scan is usually going to test for a wide variety of vulnerabilities. Based on the output, we can see that there's quite a bit being tested. 
So what are we actually concerned about? We're concerned about Log4j and was it seen and prevented? Let's go into the detailed reporting through this screen. I'm going to get rid of our timeline so we can see more information. Now, I will bring your attention back to the CVE that we are protecting against. And that is CVE 2021-44228. This is the CVE that's most commonly associated with Log4j. And as you can see here, I have a number of critical alerts. Let's go in and open up one of these and have a look. The target was our Linux01 server, the IP address ending in .166, and you can see all the featured information here. Let's pull up the full event history to see what's going on. I see three different attempts in our rule stopping log4j with the profile we created. Remember, we created the rule to match against log4j signatures with the action set to reject. If we want to see more, we can perform a PCAP export. The PCAP file is stored in the manager and can be downloaded to my local machine for review. We go into the new and updated scan and search for log4j and we can see that no successful log4j vulnerabilities occurred. This is a really good sign that we put in a compensating control against this particular attack. Lastly, we could check syslog. Syslog is a good source of truth in terms of knowing what happened in the environment. If we do a quick search in Log Insight for IDPS-EVT events, we will get all the low-level information about what's going on. It does not take long to look through these logs to see Log4j events and things related to it. This is the log entry here that I can share with different individuals involved in the attack or in the overall campaign. With all this information, we as a team feel confident that we have a compensating control against this particular vulnerability and are no longer vulnerable for Log4j. IDPS is a powerful feature in the VMware security framework. As we saw in this demo, we were able to protect the workload from Log4j with just a few simple steps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.